speaker um, is, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Georgia. Georgia. Yes. So next speaker is Georgia. He's a postdoc um, at ITU Copenhagen, and he's interested in alive or artificial evolution. And he is also one of the organizers of the recent EvoCraft challenge, which I which I found um, exciting because we also were involved in that as competitors. So uh, over to you, Georgia. Thank you. You, I presume, you can see my screen. You can, yeah. Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So, not talking about EvoCraft challenge this time. We're talking about something a bit different. We're going to be talking about uh, safer reinforcement learning through transferable instinct networks. And this work has been done by Sebastian Risi, my supervisor, and myself. Um, so, what are what are, what is the gist? What are we talking about today? We're talking about reinforcement learning and how, how reinforcement learning works in the context of policy gradient. And just to explain what, what quickly what reinforcement learning is, we are having an agent that needs to interact with the environment. And um, this environment communicates a reward back to the agent. Um, the agent behavior is defined by a parameterized function that we call the policy. Uh, normally, these are the weights of a neural network. So a neural network defines the policy. So which action is done in which state observation. And, um, and um, here we, gonna, we are going to focus on uh, uh, continuous actions, which means that actions lie on a continuum as opposed to having categorical actions where you can see it as a categorical action is like an agent is pressing buttons, so he has like uh, discrete actions here. Actions are um, uh, continuous values. Um, um, the poly policy gradient is uh, just a method of how we train uh, these neural network weights and given by the formula down, the, down there. And uh, we are just trying to uh, maximize the expected, the expected um, reward uh, during a lifetime of an agent. So just to, sorry, just to show what we mean here, we here we show it on an um, um, open AI's safety gym environment. So here our agent is this red fish that is trying to reach this green cylinder. <clears throat> and um, so the point of um, the, 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 the training is such that this little red fish learns how to reach this green uh, cylinder and uh, the, the, the the if the if the fish gets closer to the green cylinder the um, the reward is positive and if the fish goes away, is going away from the cylinder the um, reward is negative so using that policy gradient algorithm the fish learns how to in the left image is going to the cylinder in the middle image is trying to push these buttons and in the right in uh, 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 film is trying to push this yellow box toward the um, toward the green cylinder so these are different tasks that the uh, that are defined by the um, how the reward is being uh, given to the agent so this is just normal um um, um, reinforcement learning, what we've seen so far, but what we are interested here is if we are going to um, allow agents to learn new things while being deployed in the real world, we would like these reinforcement learning agents to adapt to new goals while, while avoiding unsafe situations. So um, in other words, if we uh, if we are training our robot in a simulator, we don't care if while learning it's crashing into uh, walls or humans, but if we deploy it in the real world, we would like, if, if it has to learn new skills and new tasks, we would like the, the agent to not do uh, catastrophic uh, collisions and something that would maybe injure the robot or other participants or make damage to property and things like this. Um, so there is this there is this contradiction in how these normally these agents learn, and the way these agents normally learn is by randomly sampling from a distribution um, defined by by the output of the network, where um, the action action 
the, con the continuous actions given by these distributions, uh, this, this distribution being random inherently uh, can bring an agent to such, such undesirable uh, situations. Um, for example, if we see here in a small film, so here we are, are and this, the safety gym allows us to, to um, simulate such uh, dangerous situations. In, in our case, we, we modified the environment such that these blue circles on the floor are, are so-called hazard zones. So we would like to make it such that the, um, the little red fish is able to learn a task while minimizing or ideally completely avoiding um, getting itself into this, uh, stepping over these blue circles on the floor. So, but since since the the um, original algorithms don't initially care about that, they 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 you know since they are sampling random uh, random actions, they often bring agents to step over these these um, um, these um, hazard zones so here we are assuming that that hazard zone hazard zones or hazardous situations will not change um, not change during changing of tasks so why is this important so what we are trying to do so our goal is to uh, a safe adaptation to new tasks that will uh, that will um, require from the agent to avoid obviously dangerous situations while exploring the environment. Um, so the question we're asking: Can an unchanging module that regulates the actions of the plastic neural network improve the safety of the learning network? So our proposed solution comes from the, as an inspiration from. The animal kingdom, um, we, we thought of um, uh, separating a policy into instincts and uh, normal neural net, uh, normal policy network instincts. Here we see a bunch of monkeys seeing a completely harmless snake and freaking out about it. Um, this behavior is um, uh, mammal fear of snake. Snakes is something that we don't have to explicitly learn. It's, it's instinctual, instinctual. We are born with it. And um, it helps us while we are exploring the environment when we see uh, something that resembles a snake or it is a snake to actually do not, you know, there is a specific type of actions that we are, the instincts will not allow us to do in order to increase our uh, chances of surviving. Um, so how this how did this is uh, biological how is this biological inspiration uh, translated into our neural network architecture? We divided our um, policy into two policies. One policy is defined by a, a so-called policy network or a plastic policy network here on the left side of the of the graph, and we have an instinctual network on the right side. So these networks work in unison. Um, they both get, get the environmental input. This is input from the sensors. Um, and the policy network is the, the old fashioned um, reinforcement learning, the policy gradient network that, that is exploring the environment by generating random actions. Um, the only difference is that this, this network is, en is encapsulated in this instinctual network control where the instinctual network is getting as well the input from the environment, but is also getting an input from the policy network about the action the policy network is um, planning to execute. Based on these two information, the, the instinctual network uh, outputs, um, outputs a modulation signal. So mo a modulation signal is basically the idea of this modulation signal is either to suppress uh, the policy network or to suppress itself. And by suppressing itself, it's suppress suppressing its own alternative instinctual action. Um, so idea behind this, if, if, if the agent finds itself close to a um, um, potentially hazardous, hazardous uh, state, 
the instinctual network will uh, suppress the policy network and uh, propose an alternative action that will take it away um, from the hazardous situation and this modulation signal will will facilitate that it's like a kind of like a self uh, it's kind of like a gate um, that that you know amplifies one or the other uh, outputs and then we combine these actions to get a final action that will actually be and uh, what the agent is executing. Um, uh, of course, um, in order to train these two policies, we take uh, in, in this setup, we take three steps. We have a so-called pre-training phase. In a pre-training phase, we first um, uh, train a policy that ignores, completely ignores the, the hazard zones um, and only Mac solves that uh, maximizes its, uh, the, its reward in solving the task. In this case, reaching the green cylinder, so it doesn't care about any of uh, these other elements. Um, this policy is um, then so. This is our pre-training phase one. This policy is then uh, blocked, so it's unchanging. So it's solving this task pretty well with again with no regards to hazards. And then in the pre-training phase two we train this instinct, uh, instinct policy. And the instinct policy is trained such that it, um, it's, a, it's a designed reward that combines the task reward. So we are trying to, um, we are trying to al allow the instinct to also maximize reward, but also it is, um, the part of the design reward is to suppress. So every time the instinct actually acts, so it's when it's uh, suppressing the policy and not suppressing itself, it gets slightly punished. And it also get, gets uh, punished when it violates one of the hazards. Um, so just to repeat, like we are training instinct in such a way that it is discouraged to act but also encouraged uh, to to avoid act in order to avoid hazards and also we add this if it's solving the task we also give it an extra reward um so this is our pre-training phase and this is what we considered here is um what we are considering here, here pre-training phase is something where we prime the instinct to um avoid hazards while, while not interfering with normal learning when, when it's not necessary. And then we, we call training is basically deployment. Um, in this phase, we are testing the, the, the performance of learning uh, with, with, um, with relationship to how, how well the task is solved and how well we, the agent is avoiding hazards while uh, learning a task. And this training uh, contains uh, two tasks that were not seen in the pre-training phase. So the, the, the agent gets, gets, com uh, gets a completely new random policy. Uh, that has to adapt to a different task. One of the tasks is this task buttons where the agent has to press these, these orange circles are called um, uh, buttons. So it has to press the correct one. So this is one task. And the second task is the task push when the um, agent has to push this yellow box into the green cylinder. And um, of course, during while it's trying to learn that it needs to not step into any of them or minimize stepping into the blue circles. So how do our, how does our um, um, instinct perform? We here I show the behavior of the final um, uh, policy that was trained by 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 instinct protecting it from the from the from the um, um, hazardous situations, and we see that our agent is like having large margins like around the the hazard. Sometimes it's even uh, blocked or semi-blocked. You know, if if the situation is is pushing it around, um, so it's 
it can solve the task, um, but it's very careful around the, the, the blue circles. Here we see the, um, uh, the baseline. Um, of course, I forgot to, to say how we train the baseline. So we have basically two baselines. Um, one baseline is where we pre-train a policy on, um, on, on our pre-training task here. And then we uh, just transfer it to the new task and we see how it performs uh, readapting to the new task. And the second baseline is just randomly initializing a, um, a, uh, a policy in, uh, in, the, um, in one of those testing tasks. Um, so here we see the behavior of the, of the pre-trained policy. Um, we see that is also successfully solving the task um now the more interesting things are on uh, on this slide so we see that here we see after um several trainings we see that the, the uh, qualitatively we see that the task is solved um is the 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 the, the fish learns to to follow the to follow the to press the buttons but we see that also that during training, our approach where um, um, so instinct instinct uh, uh, regulated reinforcement learning has massive decreases in how many total collisions during training our agent um, agent um, commits. And in the left graph, we can see this during uh, while we are updating the policy, we see that basically. The, um, the um, orange line, which is our approach, is 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 almost completely flat, and we see that the pre-trained baseline is performing better than the random baseline, which is to expect because the pre-training pre-trained baseline learned to avoid um, avoid um, the hazards in the pre-training phase, but. In order to readapt to a new task, it needs to it needs to explore, and that and that exploration in doing that exploration, nothing nothing protects the um, the pre-trained policy to step into um, hazard zones. Um, and we see that random baseline basically starts with a massive um, collisions with um, hazards because it has no um, no um, idea on on what a hazard is. Um, on the task push, this task is much, much uh, harder to solve. We see that our instinct is quite conservative in, in protecting the, um, uh, the agent. So there the, the, the are like in this dense, dense um, area of hazards, it's quite slow as opposed to pre-trained policy that 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 um, has a very you know quick um, clearing of this this um, hazard network. Um, when we uh, check the graph, we see again that our approach almost completely eliminates the um, hazards. Of course, not completely. We see some spikes, but again, it it uh, um, it it. Um, the result is much better than our two baselines, and we see that when we average the um, evaluation rewards on this task, that um, our approach is almost equal as two baselines. Um, we see that in this task push, uh, if we if we if we plot the trajectory of an agent, we see and if the um, the, the the red. Um, indicates a strong activation of the instincts, so, so strong involvement of the instinct in the in the regulation of the of the agent's action. We see that close to the close to the hazards, the um, activation of the instinct, so instinct regulation is very high, uh, shown by these with these red parts of the path, and then it, the blue parts show that the policy is allowed to act, and then. We say it, 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 the 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 yellow stripe is the the trajectory of the box toward the toward the goal. Um, future work is actually applying this in in applying this in uh, retraining um, uh, self driving cars in um, this car lab 
self-driving uh, simulator um, and seeing how it performs there. And um, so this is currently work we are doing. And yeah, the acknowledgements, this project was funded by um, um, DARPA uh, Fund for uh, Lifelong Learning. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Georgia, very much for the talk. So uh, we have one question in the Q&A. If Federico would like to ask it, ask it uh, himself, then please put your hand up. Otherwise, I will read out the question. So um, the question is, have you thought about optimizing with an evolutionary algorithm rather than reinforcement learning? Uh, yes, I mean, the first uh, iteration of the, um, of this project was we did evolutionary algorithm to to uh, to actually min to train the instinct <clears throat> but the problem is that in these in these simulators there are, especially this is a mujoko one based on mujoko simulator running an evolution on a, on on a, on a larger um, population is extremely slow so this work and this this entire pre-training phase and then the way we and then designing the reward was in order to avoid using population-based algorithms because currently it's way too slow yeah okay thank you thank you thank you um yes i have some 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 questions and uh, comments regarding the fact that actually it seems like uh, if you view this as a as a kind of modular uh, system, then in some sense, you could probably add more things than just instinct. And in this yeah. process, maybe you could do more and more interesting things. But uh, yeah, given the time limit, I think we can we can discuss this over over a coffee. Uh, yeah. So thank you uh, again very much for the talk. Thank you. And